Hey guys, Mr. Bankerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at solving a system of equations using inverse matrices. Now we're going to look at solving a system using inverse matrices. So this is going to be a little bit different than we've looked at before with using matrices to solve a system. We are going to be building a matrix, actually three matrices, but we're not going to be taking them and putting them in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. We're going to approach this a little bit differently. The first thing we're going to build as we're looking at the system of equations is what's called a coefficient matrix. And what that means is we're going to take a look at the coefficients, the numbers, in front of our variables. So in our top equation, we have a 3 in front of the x and a negative 2 in front of the y. In our bottom equation, we have a negative 1 in front of the x and a positive 1 in front of the y. And this coefficient matrix, we're going to call our matrix A. Now I said we were going to build three matrices, so here comes the second one. The second one is going to be a variable matrix. And as we look at our equations, we have an x variable and a y variable. So I'm going to put the x on the top and I'm going to put the y on the bottom here. And on the right hand side, we've got these two answers, 0 and 5. We're going to take those and turn those into a matrix. Now I called this matrix up front A. This variable matrix, I'm going to call my matrix X. And this matrix that contains our answers, I'm going to call matrix B. So essentially what we have happening in here is we have matrix A times matrix X, and that's equaling matrix B. And our goal is to solve to get X alone. And when you're solving an algebraic equation, you always use inverse operations to help you. So if I wanted to get rid of this A that's attached to the X right now, I would have to use an inverse matrix. So I can move that A over to the other side by making it the inverse of A, and then we're going to multiply that by matrix B. So that's using an inverse matrix to help us solve this. Now the easiest way to do inverse matrices is using our calculator. So I'm going to take these matrices, A and B, type them into my calculator, and then do the inverse of A times B. So in our calculator, the first thing we need to do is get our matrices typed in. So I'm going to go second matrix. I'm going to edit matrix A, and this is a 2 by 2 matrix with entries 3, negative 2, negative 1, and positive 1. And then I need to go second matrix, and we're going to edit matrix B. This is a 2 by 1 matrix with entries 0 and 5. Now I'm going to quit out of here, and we said in order to solve this, we were going to do the inverse of A. So I go second matrix, and I grab matrix A, and I do the inverse of A by hitting that X with a negative 1. So we have the inverse of matrix A times second matrix B, and when we hit enter and multiply those together, it gives us this 2 by 1 matrix, 10, 15. That top value is your X value, and that bottom value is your Y value. So when we did this, we got this X matrix, which we said contained X and Y. And when we took the inverse of A times B, we got the matrix that contained 10 and 15. So our X value is 10, and our Y value is 15. Now this method is a really good alternative to creating an augmented matrix and then trying to take that augmented matrix and put it in reduced row echelon form because there are so many steps involved in putting things in reduced row echelon form. It's easy to make a sign error or a small addition error somewhere along the way. So this way is a little bit more straightforward. So here we have a three variable system, X, Y, and Z in there, but the process is exactly the same. So the first thing we're going to do is build our coefficient matrix. So looking at the numbers in front of the variables. So across the top row, we have 3, negative 3, 6. Middle row, we have 1, negative 3, 10. And bottom row, we have negative 1, 3, negative 5. Now in our variable matrix, now we have three variables. We have X, Y, and Z. And then our answer matrix on the right hand side has 20, 40, and 30. So just like we did before, this coefficient matrix is going to be our matrix A. This answer matrix is going to be our matrix B. And to solve to get our variable matrix, our X matrix, we're going to take the inverse of A times matrix B. And I'm going to do that on my calculator. 
Now the first thing we need to do is edit our matrices. So we go second matrix, we need to edit matrix A, and I've already got my information typed in here. It's a three by three matrix. Our top row we said was gonna be three, negative three, six. Middle row was one, negative three, 10, and bottom row was negative one, three, negative five. And I already have my matrix B in here. We have a three by one matrix with entries 20, 40, and 30. So we need to do the inverse of matrix A. So I grab matrix A, do its inverse times second matrix B, and we hit equals, and we get this answer in here. So we get 18, 39, and a third, so 39.3, and 14. So our variable matrix, that X, Y, Z matrix is gonna equal 18, 39.3, and 14. So our X value is 18, our Y value is that 39.3, and our Z value is 14. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.